All right, guys. What's up? Welcome back to Average Shakes. Today's episode, we got you week two of NFL football. We're going to talk about all the games, top to bottom, all of our bad calls because it's been a rough <laughs> two weeks. Um, lot, I'm down a lot of money first two weeks of football. It's just, love it let's just put that out there. Gotta love what? Oh, back. Bankruptcy is back. Yeah. No, no, no we don't love that, Roman. <laughs> You just you gotta love football with, the, with everything that comes with it. No, no, yeah. we don't. All right, yes. you can, what, I can gonna, hate football. I'm gonna kick Empty. the music on and then we'll get this bot started. All right, you guys can argue after that. <laughs> Let's go. Welcome back. What's up, guys? NFL Week Two. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm 500 yet on the season, so. I'm not feeling pretty good about my picks, the pickums. I've I've surveyed the field. I've taken a look at my notes. I think the NFL is just weird. Two weeks in, I don't think it's me, but who knows? I'll give it another week, and then I'll start fading myself. If we get to that point where I'm three weeks deep, my picks are still bad. Start fading myself, but for now. Let me give myself another week to fight on. We got a good guest coming up. A guest that I want to have more than just one time coming up next. So, yeah, I'm going to give myself another week before I start fading myself and picks get crazy. And I might just come in last this year. But week three is a bad place to start fading yourself. But I'm right there with you. No comment on my my decision. (laughs) I'm just giving the fans my point of view. I'm right there in the same boat with you, well, except for I'm, my uh, picks in the um, average, parlays, parlay. average take parlays that we're getting. Not your oh, average. 2-0. and oh, Love it. I don't think yeah. anybody else can say that here. That part of the pickums, I am very doing very well in. Yeah, Other Roman's taken hit. two unders, and they've hit both weeks. So, you know what? Let's go. We're just going to get a... From for that <laughs> under, we hate unders. Life's too short to bet the under. But Roman, you know what? My Good pockets are deep now. Good job, Roman, love it, love it, love it. No way! I went nine and seven this week. Yeah, nice week, Shinny. I think I went seven and nine. I think I went five and twelve. Oh, Roman, after uh, five and eleven. Five and eleven. I mean, sorry. After after top of the board last week. We went from one to none that quick, <laughs> baby. Um, I'll have to get Colin's picks. I'm not one, too two, sure. Three, four, five. Um, what Colin went on the pickums last week? Five of the seven losses were average shakes curses. Okay, so let's get into this a little bit. Um, Chinny, let's start off on those five games. Average shakes curses. Okay. Let's start off number one. Let's hear it. Browns versus Jets. All right, well, let's get right into this game. The Browns were supposed to win this one. All right, this is one of those early seasons flukes where the Browns lose this game to the Jets in the last second. I think the Browns were up 30-17 to 17 in the fourth quarter. Something yes. Like that, yeah. I think that's what the – It was 30 – I'm pretty sure it was 30-17 with a minute and 30 seconds left. Okay, well, even worse. Two minutes left on the clock. It's 30-17. to 17. The Jets score a touchdown, kick an onside kick, get it, score a touchdown, and the game's about done right there. Um, is Joe Flacco that dude? Is Joe Flacco elite? Is the because <laughs> <laughs> by golly, the man in the first two weeks of the league is top three in passing. <laughs> wow. I don't think I would ever guess Joe Flacco top three in anything this yeah, year. Yeah, so this is where one of these, you know, average take curses. It might be a true curse at this point. Yeah, absolutely. it was a, it, How many games did we sweep that we won? Uh, Rams, Broncos, <laughs> Packers, Bills, four. Okay, okay. That's good. That's 49ers. Good. Good. You guys take me to 49ers. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. So five. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. yep, that was it because – so we went five and five between the sweeps. So it might be time to fade myself. That's all I have to say. <laughs> in the podcast. All right, Trevor, get get to the next game of the of the average take curse because that one that one was a true fluke. I'll give it to you. I don't think we see another one of those type games this year. 
but who knows? Uh, let's so get the next this. next game was Ravens versus Tua. Okay, so uh, the very next game, this was exactly the same as the Browns game. So um, my take was thrown right out the window when we said that we'd never see it again. It's right here. The Ravens were up a jillion at halftime. A jillion. Lamar oh. was trending, going everywhere. Pay the man, pay the man. Mm. Running all over them. Had like four touchdowns at halftime. All of a sudden, Tua Tenga Vailoa, Waddle, <laughs> Tyreek Hill. I think it's the Ravens' blown coverage. I don't think it's Tua. Tua I, threw can't blown coverage. That, Tua threw two bad throws to Tyreek. Bad and no. Tyreek Hill just two, no. two touchdowns that are two bad throws. No, yes. not a bad throw. You could say it's under underthrown all you want. Hit, the man was wide open and it hit him in stride. Was that stride? That was not in stride. I he had to turn back for both of them for a, for a touchdown. Ooh, that did has stop, to be in the stride. Did he, did he stop in his tracks? All right. No. All right. He I did, don't want to hear no to a slander. I can't. I can't slander to it here. He had six fucking to. touchdowns. Six touchdowns. Four hundred sixty-nine yards. We can't slander this man when we. The Ravens were up a jillion. Usually teams curl over and die at that point. Dolphins didn't die. Some bullshit. You know, like today, Titans died out there on the field versus the Bills. They died. They're fumbling punts. They, that's a team that dies. Dolphins had no sign of death in them. Come all the way back. Stun the stun the Ravens. I know the Ravens had their like fourth court fourth like corners in or something like that. Fourth on the depth chart. They they just got out. Oh, but two was a beast. Two was a beast. He's going against four string cornerbacks. Yes, they got outgassed. <laughs> that team, those guys can run. That's what they did. They four ran string track. DBs and he's fucking elite. The Dolphins ran track on the Ravens. That's what happened. Wild. They ran track. That's that. For the sake of the matter, they literally ran all over them to a win. And, um, yeah, I'm hyped for the Dolphins because I truly think that they still have a good defense. I mean, training last year, they had a top five scoring defense. So I think that's only going to make its way back here. The defenses get better with season progresses. Defenses aren't like all there in the beginning of the season. I really like that Dolphins team. They're going to be dangerous for sure. I and like Mike. Watch next week. Next week when they go, they get to play a real team to Roman standards, the Buffalo Bills. So Thank you. we'll see how the underthrown balls happen when Tyreek Hill is, get... five, is 15 yards behind. The it's going to look like the game did today. Bills 41, fucking Dolphins 7. Okay. All right. Whoa. <laughs> Just watch. Just watch. Whoa. Just All watch. right, Trevor, next game. Next game in the average takes curse was – the New England Patriots versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this well, Steelers man. offense might be the worst offense in NFL history. And that's coming from a Steelers fan. This, this who, game hurt me the most. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, it hurts the most because what happened to the steel curtain, the amount of chances and stops back to back. We were getting, we need to stop here. Defense does it. We get we need another stop. Defense gets it. The offense is one of the worst, if not the worst, in NFL history. And I really hope I'm jinxing them at this point because all it seems was three and out, three check downs, defense contains them. There was one there was one uh, drive where we got four yards, and then the next play, Mac Jones throws the ball, six-yard pass, already more than the Steelers got. But still, unacceptable to lose three points against this Patriots team who is not that good at all. They really aren't. So, Trevor, my next question is, because I don't really want to comment on the Steelers because how bad they played. When is it time to say, Mitch, you're not good? Well, I was looking into that. Um, I was looking into that a little bit, and Tomlin said at the beginning of the year that Mitch will start all year. He wants to Kenny to wa- sit and watch all year, but to say so Mitch isn't gonna, good. We're gonna deal with this all year. Yes, 
we're gonna deal with this, Mitch. Yes, because I think I think uh, Mike Tomlin is a man of his word, and he'd rather figure it out than to just fold and let Kenny Pickett come in too early, even though he may be better. Which at this point, he probably is better. I think he has I to mean, win it in practice. Win it in practice, you you get the chance on the field. I would no. love to see Kenny at some point this year. I know it's too early, and it's just fun poking at Steelers fans. And because this is a situation where you have to start thinking, like, is this season going to be, like, are we going to go for it? Because the Bengals don't really seem like they're going to repeat at all. Ravens just had a comebacker where does it show that they're a fake team? It's not really real. And the Browns are the Browns this year. I mean, they don't get Deshaun for 11 games. This is a really winnable division, it seems like. At two two game, two weeks in this year, this division is up for grabs. Any, yeah, any and I will, honestly, the Steelers will be the favorites if T.J. Watt was playing because he is such a difference maker when he's on the field. We went from having seven sacks last week against the Bengals to having zero against the Patriots. Yeah, um, that was a true a true um, loss, losing him. Like, that hurt you guys tremendously because I was even watching the game and they, they were talking about it, how the Patriots the week before had given up a couple sacks and not had looked good. Uh, Mac had been getting hit a lot. He had the back injury. Then this week, you guys weren't getting to the quarterback that shows it shows a lot of what TJ does in and out. And even though everyone knows who TJ Watt is, it's still the force and the havoc he brings. Like, yeah, you could game plan all you want around him, but you ain't going to stop him. What about Minka Fitzpatrick though? Balling out. Yeah. I said it last week. He's the greatest safety in NFL history. Uh, Oh my God. What a hot take. Still, still somewhat true it. this week. And he said it last week, but I, I'm i not going to say anything. There's no shot. No, but not he yet, is, at least. That's, that's what I expect when one superstar goes down, another needs to step up. He has done enough to, to, yes. to have the Steelers should be 2 0. He's done enough for the Steelers to be 2 0. We're 1 1, not that bad. A lot of teams are 1 1 at the moment, but still. It's absolutely wild that we lost this game by three points out of the amount of chances we had to just drive down the field, kick a field goal. And then even even at halftime when Mac Jones threw that fucking wobbly duck and Nelson Aguilar absolutely embarrassed our corner, who literally looked like a five-year-old trying to cover on that pass. It was absolutely embarrassing. Um, all you have to do is bat the ball down and maybe we win this, win this game, but Probably not because this fucking offense is horrendous. Yeah, I feel bad for you, Trevor. You're gonna have a lot more of those games this year. A lot more of where it's not up good. to Mitch. If they're gonna keep Mitch in, he's gonna have to win games. And that was a game that definitely could have been won and wasn't. So um we'll see. Let's move on to the next average six sweep. Next game for the average six sweep was the <laughs> The 0-2 Bozo Bengals against Cooper Rush's Cowboys. Oh, my God. Okay. No. Cooper it, Rush. I'm glad you said that name because – Cooper Rush is – Holy he shit. He played unreal. Unreal. Um, The Bengals have a lot of hangover. I, and they didn't even win, which is the crazy thing. They didn't win the Super Bowl, and they have one of the biggest Super Bowl hangovers. They look lost out there. Everybody – um, that O line looks t- god awful, terrible. They upgraded the O line and it looks worse than last year. They, What's going hey, on? They you upgraded. guys looked at me crazy when I said the Bengals won't make the playoffs this year. Now I look kind of smart, kind of, kind, kind of. So far, two games in, um, maybe they turn around, maybe not. We'll see. But that team definitely needs to play way better if they ever want to make playoffs again. <laughs> They, they look they play, bad. The t- first two weeks of the season, they played terrible. They should have won both games handedly, and they gave both games away and made Cooper Rush play like Tom Brady. <laughs> I, I don't understand how that – Wild. Wild. But um, Cowboys Absolutely have weapons, wild. man. We talked about it. They're, they've always been a decent – 
team. Like on paper, last year they looked like the best team in the division. This year I said Eagles, but they're up there. If Cooper Rush could just play a decent game, they could find ways to win games. But I don't know what their schedule looks like for the remaining five. They're in the they're in the NFC least, so yeah, they're it's in probably the, looking pretty good. Um, the worst division in NFC two. Uh, they have a Monday night game versus the two and O Giants. <laughs> um, but yeah, Cooper yeah. Rush, he he played terrific. Two hundred ninety nine yards and a tutty. Zeke Elliott had a hundred yards rushing. Um, no, we didn't. Know. That that's a se- that's a season. Sorry, I'm looking at next week. I was about to say, was he did what? that. Thing. He Tony has Pollard was <laughs> yeah that 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 guy on the season. Shitty. Yeah, I drafted Tony Pollard this year. I like Tony Pollard better than Zeke. Um, in overall sample, he catches passes better. I think he runs a little bit better at this day and age. Um, but I still think that that Cowboys team could stick in. Um, they're definitely going to have to play better um, coming up because the division, anything happens. We talk about it a lot. That division loves to just go, you know what? You won last time. Let's get it this time. Or we want to try to be time. 500. Let's yeah. who can be the most 500 possible. Who can be and the that most is an, average team? That who is impossible. That is impossible to do with 17 games. But someone from that division will be 8-8-1 eight, eight, and one. somehow, some way. Oh, yeah. There, there'll be another tie this year. Don't Stephen Shea's wrong in all aspects, saying there will never be a tie every time he does data day. So, um, next and final average stakes curse. Um, the Arizona Cardinals and Kyler Murray versus Derek Carr's Raiders. Is the Call of Duty fucking take out the window? <laughs> It was Let's never in it. the window. Still, he's still, still never in the window. I think he's two and twenty-three on. Uh, <laughs> well, he's one and twenty-three on double XP weekend. Last <laughs> weekend we thought he would be worse because it was a the beta weekend for the new COD. Um, I'm still not going to throw it out the window because there's still enough facts to prove hey, that. I think <laughs> the internet bullied him into never playing this game again. Uh, so. He, he might have definitely got bullied into do not touch your controller this weekend because everyone <laughs> everyone and their mother was talking about it. It was all over my Twitter. I follow mostly sports and sports comedians and like guys who like to joke around. It was all over Twitter. Like, hey, Meta's out this weekend, Kyler. Um, yep. And he flipped the switch. They came back. It was 20 to nothing. Raiders fans were popping champagne when it was 23 or 20 to three or something like that. I can't remember what it was. They were Raiders up by 20. Fans, Raiders fans were popping champagne on the sideline. I was literally laughing because I saw these after the fact that they had lost. But it's just funny because I talked about it a lot. I'm not a fan of their head coach. They went and got Josh McDaniel. He sucked as a head coach before with the Broncos, the same exact fucking division. I start in the year zero and two, and they could have they could have had that W. Yeah, for Devonte Adams to have two catches in a game is probably the worst thing Derek Carr's ever done. Derek Carr looks very bad this weekend. And wait, did you just say Devonte Adams have two catches? Devonte Adams had two catches, two catches for twelve yards, and a touchdown. Yep, and he, he's on my fancy team, and. That's horrendous because you go from having 10 catches against one of the top defenses in this league for 141 yards, and then you go two catches for 12 yards, and this is the first game his grandparents ever got to see him play in professional football. All are you asshole. And he shits the bed. No, I think this is this is Derek Carr's fault. Yeah, and Derek Carr threw 252 yard passing yards and 42 after but that. But his grandparents are watching this game thinking you make 25 million dollars doing that are you kidding me they probably think he has the easiest job in the whole world uh that weekend he did 
<laughs> uh, yeah, it kind of sucks because he came out before and said his grandparents had never got to watch him play. He was excited. Derek Carr only fed him two catches, 12 yards, and a touchdown. Nice. Yeah, Matt Collins was their leading receiver. Derek Carr is infamous for finding one guy at the beginning of the game and targeting him the entire game. One guy will pop off every game, but is your team going to win, dog? No, you're targeting the same dude over and over again. The defense is letting you get those passes to him. It is a spread if to you love. tell me, hey, would you rather the ball be in Devontae Adams' hands, <laughs> Waller's hands, Renfro's hands, or Collins' hands? Yeah, and I don't know, like... I didn't even know who number 10 was when the game started, and they were like, well, Derek Carr. I'm a, I'm a real big believer in let the best players on your team get the ball in their hands. Just put the ball in their hands and let's see what happens. And when you, the best player on, on the field has two catches for 12 yards. You're never going to win. Never going to win. Never. No matter how many points you're up at halftime, you'll never win. And yeah. I don't care it's how great of a game plan you cook up for that guy. You force him the ball. You literally force him the ball. Let him oh, just. Yeah. I'm going to tell you. If he's that good, he'll I'm make gonna, a play. I'm going to throw him the ball. Remember Aaron Rodgers? He said, yeah, it's kind of like that when the meme came out and it was like, fuck it, Devontae somewhere. Aaron Rodgers literally came out after the game and said, yeah, it's kind of like that. That's because Devontae is so fucking good. He's going to go get that ball. Just throw it to him. Exactly. Just throw it to him. It makes too much sense. Oh, shit. Jalen Hurts interception. Yeah. I just watched that. Almost a pick six. Um, okay, so those were all the average stakes sweep games. They were all comeback comeback wins. They were all last second. Like it was not like we got our asses blown off. No, it was all comeback. It was all comeback. Our tired in the fourth up. quarter. Yeah, there was all blown losses. Like maybe we're not cursed. We just picked the wrong games. The, those teams love to blow leads happens yeah, i guess um all right so let's let's move on to the thursday night since we got all of our average takes um curses curses uh chiefs chiefs great win um so oh, wow. this, game, this game was rough chargers and chiefs were playing a great game chargers drove down the field and throw a 99-yard interception return for a touchdown. That sucked. That ended the game, ruined the game. I know Chargers came back and scored and made it a three-point game, but that's all the momentum game. switched. All it's the still, momentum switched. Still the game. Um, it just felt like old Chiefs. You know, they had our number. It seemed like they moved the ball easily at some points, and then it was hard again. Like Chargers defense bends, doesn't break. We didn't give up a jillion points to the chiefs wasn't like they blew us out of the water. We lost our own mess up and chargers. It's kind of like the lions. They have to learn how to win games. still. like they do lose these games late. And that was Philip rivers esque at the, at its finest. It, it sucked. It, it was a shot back to memory lane when we chargers drove down the field in the game with a touchdown and it was an interception. It was a shot to the heart. Um, my biggest, biggest takeaway other than that pick six that ruined the game is Brandon Staley scared to go for it on fourth down now. I know Ever since huh? last year. Oh my god, Kurt. Another got- interception. Dude, he is so <laughs> bad. <laughs> He's under throwing every ball. Wow. He's so bad. Um Brandon Staley got bullied into kicking it on fourth he, down. He got he got scared. Yeah. <laughs> I will give uh, credit. Justin Herbert had a little bit of Big Ben in him, staying into the field, or uh, staying in the game after. He, I'm sure. He, I'm might, sure that ruptured spleen. You might be the next Big Ben. Chet. I'm He's sure a that ruptured He's a dog. spleen it looks like that, it looks like if if there's gonna be another dog like that, it's him. Herbert's the one. There's a dog in the NFL like. <sighs> Like your boy Big Ben used to be, where he fights off everything and ruptured spleen, and he's still throwing dimes. He has fractured rib cartilage, to be exact. 
per second yeah. with the injury. <laughs> uh, I just still, you know how bad it hurt when you can't even run one fucking yard to get a first down and just slide, you know? He couldn't even do that. And then he comes the next play and throws that dot to the no-name receiver that was probably in for that one play. But still, everyone said it in the media, and I know the media is not always correct, but the Chargers looked so much better than the Chiefs the whole game, and they lost. <laughs> and it's usually – I mean, that's a common trend for you guys, like you were saying. They they are very creative at finding ways to, to lose. But the, this team is good, the upside but... is, is there, you know? The you see how dangerous there. they can be. That Herbert kid's a stud, even though on his dying limb, he throws a fucking piss missile. Like, it, it was it was beautiful to watch. Um, It sucks, that interception. And I think that is a loss that you can take this early. And learn from it. Got to learn, learn from, from it. it. But you better not do that again late. Like, we cannot do that again later this year. Versus the Chiefs or anybody like that. We can't do those same mistakes. Brandon Staley, I'm all for going for it on fourth down. We showed the league that, yeah, it's actually better to use all four downs you're given. And the Chargers were successful at that last year. Don't shy a fucking away from it. Don't be scared. Don't be nervous. Do it. I know we did it too much last year, but fucking feel it in your nutsack and let's do it every couple of times, all right? I'm I'm all for fourth downs, especially when we're on chief side. I don't want to send the punter out when we have the ball on the opposite side of the 50. Yeah. With Justin Herbert so on this scared. team. We punted it twice with the ball on Kansas City side. Analytics were out the window the whole game. It it, it was scared. He play, our coach was a little scared. Um yeah, and if we don't throw that pick six Chargers win that game. I am a thousand percent yeah, hundred percent. Our defense played very well. Derwin James I mean, came I, to play, picked up Travis Kelsey, slammed him on his back. But I mean, holding the point, holding the KC to which twenty-seven he should get points for that. Why holding KC to twenty-seven points is a fan. This is the WWE clean, clean tackle. This is not the WWE. That was a clean tackle. One of the one of the cleanest I've ever seen. To be what, honest, uh, yeah. What about that is dirty? You can't just body slam guys out there. Yeah, you can. No, I'm sure he got a fine in his in his locker this morning. I'm sure Roger he did. Goodell does not sure like that. The, the team paid for it. Coach said, "I got you." So I don't think he got fined for that. It was a clean tackle. Uh, he might be fined for it, but I think I think it was clean. Like you, you it was a teach, nice hit. You teach kids that type of move right there. I've done that move <laughs> in the bag before. Uh, was definitely on our. This is not there. that is a tag. You practice that in practice. It looked like a tombstone pile driver if I've ever seen one. No, and this is if, not the WWE. No, if you were a WWE fan, that does not look like a tombstone pile driver. <laughs> it looks very close. Was total opposite. Tombstone pile driver, you got him totally upside down. His head is in between your knees. And Travis Kelsey is not a small dude. He was in the air. He was in the air. He was in the air. That's what makes this so much better. He is not a small dude. That's a huge. If his feet were on the ground, there's no shot to happen. His feet were on the ground. He caught the ball. Derwin caught caught him. Derwin caught him in the air. His feet did not touch the ground. You obviously did not watch the play. Derwin James is flat footed and puts his shoulders down and fucking wraps up Kelsey. Like he did not catch him out of the air. He's. It was a great tackle, Trevor. That's all I'm going to say about it. I'm just saying he got fined. Um, that's fine. He's he makes the most money as a safety in this league. He could pay for it. That's like me paying twenty bucks because I lost in fantasy and baseball this fucking week. Give it to me right now. Psych! You're not going to win. Yes, I am. You wasted all your points last week. I got. Um, all right, let's move on. Um. Other games we want to talk about? Uh, Buck Saints is the next game. Uh, Buck Saints. We we watched the actually. Night fight. Yeah, uh, we can talk um, about them, but yeah, I want to talk about the game them now that you said that. I'm talking about them. The um, we could have saw this coming. It was happened a couple years ago. The same dudes, Marcus Lattimore, Mike Evans, fighting. Mike Evans, oh, it's protecting Tom Brady. What the hell? You're still not allowed to go truck a guy, dude. You're going to be ejected. 
just because that's Tom heard, Brady. What do you want me to do? Yeah, uh, that not Tom touch Brady. him? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, maybe use your voice. Scream <laughs> at him, yell at him, do it the next play. I don't know. You what don't about Bruce a... sicking his dogs on dude? On you Marshall saw that? With him. He said, Mike Evans, go get him, boy. He literally went, go get him. Get him. <laughs> get him. And Mike Evans went full Rottweiler on him. Too. Yeah, he it was. Like, he... <laughs> hey, all you want about and... Bruce, but he got his dogs trained. Absolutely. And, dogs are trained. <laughs> and that was the turning point in this whole game. It, it, was. Was. it was. The Saints got scared. The Rottweiler came and bit bit them in the ass, and the Saints backed down. Yeah. Famous Jameis. Sucks. I'm so sick <laughs> of people saying Jameis is anything, dude. That man is so bad at football. I can't believe I let people talk me into, oh, Famous James, James come back. Sucks. Jameis. <laughs> Oh my God, he's gonna be the Saints quarterback. Hey. You look at their wide receivers. The man sucks. Like he's a bad quarterback. That's yeah. just plain and Good. simple. It, it, it's. I don't even know what to say. He can't. I'm ashamed. They have a a plethora of fucking wide receivers over there. They have good running backs, and he just sucks. I'm ashamed for you for picking the Saints. I am too, because they they were four and zero going in versus the Bucks. But, uh, Tom Brady can Tom Brady can finally retire and sleep very good at night. Saints don't own him anymore. Uh, yeah, but Jameis has still hasn't beat Tom, so that's all that w- went through my head. Well, I don't think he ever will, because he's so bad. Um, <laughs> that's really all I had to take away from that game was the fight. Tom Brady still looks like he's dying. Uh, I mean, he's so skinny. It's wild. Let me, let me just give this to the podcast right now. There's two options. Tom Brady was just given Wednesdays off for veteran rest day. Two options. He's either one going to marriage counseling every Wednesday, like everyone thinks, or two, the man has fucking cancer and he's doing chemo rehabs. Dude. Have you seen his face? The second one might be real. He is so sucked up. Like I yeah. okay. First yeah. off, I'm don't have any real information. This is a ponder of my brain out of nowhere. But, but he's definitely looking skinny. He looks super skinny. His face is sucked up. Looks like the skeleton emoji. I saw that tweet earlier. He looks like the handsome Squidward. Does he not? Yes, dude. The cheeks are just fucking. The cheeks are crazy. Up. Yeah, it, it's unreal. I mean, I understand he's 45 and going through life but holy shit does he not look I, it's a divorce or cancer and i'll put money on it still winning i still winning. i i don't know in this day and age i just can't believe nobody has just brought up the fact uh maybe it's photoshopped like come on guys come on in this day and age <laughs> that picture could have been photoshopped to make him look like a fucking skeleton. It, it, you know, Manti Teo documentary I, just came out. I might take that in. in Nothing the, I see in the internet more. I believe. I, I would take that into consideration if I didn't watch him at the podium the whole time. And yeah. they edited the entire. Does the camera out, have a filter out? on it or what? Yeah, unless the yes. Bucks put a death filter on Tom Brady. <laughs> I have no comment at, at further comments. All right. I don't want to get no in trouble for this redacted my statements, but I think Tom, there's something going on in Tom Brady and the Brady household. It's either divorce or cancer. <laughs> I, don't believe it. I don't know. He's still winning football games. All right. That's all that matters. Well, yep. He's two and oh. Next game. Next game. Next game. Commanders versus the Lions. All right. The commies almost had a comeback. Almost. I don't know yeah. what I was thinking picking the football team though or the commanders. I don't the, know either. The Lions the looked, Lions broke your heart the week before, the f- so you could This is the it. first time since the first quarter I th- knew the Lions were gonna win. And <laughs> it's the day I don't fucking pick them. Aiden Hutchinson looked fantastic out there. DeAndre Swift killing the game. Um I wish Almond, this happened last well, week when I pissed him. Same. Bro. On my fantasy team, I love it. On Killing one me. of my fantasy teams as well. Um, on my team too, and he's on my bench. Oh, on your yes. bench, Trevor. Yes, no yes, way. yes, yes. No way. It's an eight-man. It's an eight-man league. It's an eight-man league. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. But still, and I'm putting him on the bench after this week. 
Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, Amon Ra had a career game, awesome game. Uh, and I loved what he posted after the game. Did you see his Instagram? No. Posted, uh, yeah, I posted a somebody picked slides. him on the fantasy team, right? Yeah, so yeah, the yeah, joke yeah. was a couple weeks ago, someone drafted him in fantasy and sent him a DM and re- recited the whole remember the Titans line. If you drop a ball, you run a mile. You fumble the ball, you run a mile. Stick my John Brown, uh, whatever. Uh, stick my, my foot in your John Brown hind part. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... And then hey, run a mile. he posted on Instagram a picture of him catching a touchdown, like a couple pictures, and put, I hope I don't get a foot up my John and Brown behind or whatever. <laughs> John Brown hind. Um, so it was funny. Life comes full circle. And that was it's only week two. So wh- I'm I'm a big Amon Ra fan. Big. Big. Um and yeah, I hard, think no- hard line- knocks will do that to you. I think that, yeah, Hard Knocks did that too. <laughs> I, I had a fantasy draft right after Hard Knocks. I got three Lions on my team. I got three fucking Lions. Yeah. Amon Ra, Hawkinson, and Jamal. And Hawkinson Fuck. shit in the bed for Hawkinson. you because I got him too. Dude, Hawkinson looked like he didn't know he played a football game What yesterday. the fuck, dude? Why am I thinking, thinking that guy? <laughs> dude. Literally. I know we keep saying dude a lot because we're just <laughs> done by these performances by some of these guys, but I was expecting big things from Hawkinson. He dropped like three passes. It's terrible. Terrible. It was bad. Um, but the Lions held on the W. It was cool seeing um, their coach shout out the offense lineman who they had just picked up before the game. Did yeah, he say he's that? like a he's a yeah. five year veteran or something. It was his first five year start. veteran has been cut twenty times. Got his first career start out there, um, so that was that was super cool. Maybe he's the reason why they win. Yeah, maybe. And it was also cool. Dan Campbell sent him out first of the of the meetings, so he had the first meeting. Um, it's usually your quarterback. It's usually Jared Goff will be out there, or D Swift. He had the best game, or Amon Ra, but he sent the whole lineman, so that was cool. Um, but the Lions pick up a W, hard fought yep. W. Wentz, good for them. Wentz dug himself in a hole early. Um, tried throwing his way out, got close, but I told everyone before the season I'm a commander's hater, and I think I'm gonna stick by that for a while. They gotta earn my respect and trust around here. And I'm okay with losing this game to the Lions, honestly. I'm not I'm not okay with it. I'm I should have been on the other side of it. Early and it's the Lions, you really want that W in your book. For the for the for the commies where this division is so wish washy uppy downy flippy floppy, you wanted that W. You didn't get it. Um, all right, next game, Trevor. Next game is the Panthers and the Giants. Brian Dayball 2 0, huh? <laughs> this was the worst game I think I've ever watched in my entire life. It every time they put on the screen, I was like, holy cow, these teams suck. Baker Mayfield is a fucking trash can. Um, and, and it was just it was more than just Baker. It was a lot. It, CMC's good. CMC's all right. Yeah. I'm still I'm not I'm not biting the hype on him like I am Saquon right now. Saquon Saquon's say? money though. Saquon's good. Is that fair? He's been good. Saquon's back. Yes, that's fair to say, but I wouldn't ever say Saquon is better than CMC in the sentence. Mm. 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 Not how, about, how about I give you Just, their days? I'm, Christian I'm, McCaffrey had 15 carries, 102 yards. Saquon Barkley had 21 carries, 72 yards. For a team when your quarterback it, is fucking Baker Mayfield and Daniel oh, Jones, hey, that's Baker pretty Mayfield good. Daniel, I thought you were just going to say Baker Mayfield and not say Daniel Jones, but you hit both. No. Um. Yeah. Both. Both quarterbacks suck. Brian Dable. You. You did say it, you hit the nail on the coffin. That's really the only big change for the Giants. You added Dable. Um. We haven't seen the offense pop yet because I mean he's he was the offensive coordinator for the Bills for a couple of years. Patriots back in the day. Alabama. Like he he's been to the notable stops. Um. And he's honestly a great coach. I'm. He's more prepared to be a head coach than all the other first year head coaches in this league. Yeah, at I the think moment. So. I think so. He he's most prepared. Um I don't know if the Giants are gonna actually 
be contenders and not just pretenders. <coughs> at this point, I'm still going to mark them in my pretender. Um, in my pretender list as of right now. I mean, there's teams that are 0-2 that are better than the Giants, in my opinion, but record-wise, they're not. That division is just so wishy-washy, uppy-downy, flippy-floppy, like I said earlier. Yeah, facts. Um, The next game we got yeah, well, is... I mean, before we go there, 2-0, and when you're in that division, that's a great Big. start. Great start. It's you're a huge. game up. You're a full game up. You're but it's also up. crazy how we still don't know who's going to win the division. Well, two and zero, and we're week, still not a front runner. It's only week two. I mean, I can't pick you every division winner right now. Either. I can pick you about two. Yeah, about, about. and that's that's an if <laughs> one for sure. The Bills. That's about it. <laughs> no, it seems and like. talking about that division, uh, I think the Eagles are are that's their division. Mm, I I agree. I said that going into the year. I love the Eagles this year. I think they built this team finally, finally built this team up to where it's going to be actually a decent competitor this year. And they're showing it. They're they're dogging the uh, the Vikings right now. So, yeah. I mean, it is Kirk on Monday night, which I didn't even think about. We'll get to them. We'll get to them. We'll get to that. All right. Let's go. Next game. Next game. The fucking shitbag titty fuck game of the week. The Indianapolis Colts versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. Matt this, Ryan this, is... this was the highlight of my weekend. Yeah. My Sunday, FYI. My Sunday. Yeah. I mean, I would I would say the same thing if I was you. You had the Jags on the island. Um, I'm burying the Colts right now. Like Big Cat's pinky team, this is gonna be my live burial team. <laughs> I think they are so dead in the water, such a mush. I, it's just it's, cr- it's crazy they lose their best receiver and everything just goes to shit. They don't know how to fucking do anything. Dude, you get shut out by the Jaguars. You don't deserve to play football anymore. And I said last week, I think I said nine years. It's actually eight years now that they haven't won in Jacksonville. Eight straight years. Yeah, that is ja- wild. <laughs> I'm looking at that quote right now. Jaguars home win streak versus Colts reaches eight. Yeah. 24 0 shutout. That was That's the wild. only thing I was holding. That was the only reason why I picked the Jags. I truly believe the Colts were going to win. I picked the Jags I, because eight straight years. They, they saved me last year in week 18. Week two it happens this year, and they absolutely destroyed them. Jags gained a new fan, huh, Trevor? Jags gained a new fan. I mean, yeah. their quarterback named Trevor. He, he was that he my, was dude. He was that dude in college. So I'm waiting for a little breaking out performance here soon. And I have James Robinson to fantasy, who I've been sh- sh- keeping low on my bench because I don't trust him. All, All right. things changed week three. True, true. Let's get into the next game, Trevor. Next game, 49ers versus the Seahawks. Seahawks. Um, the only really thing I had to take away from this was Trey Lance and the injury. Rip Trey Lance, no but it's way. better for them in the long run because Jimmy G knows how to win fucking ball games. That's better very unfortunate. Them. I feel bad for Trey Lance. I feel, I feel terrible, terrible because obviously he got put into a good situation. They have a good team that they were built around him. Um, but I feel like the 49ers jinxed them. They I mean, jinxed they, themselves. They said, we're going to bring Jimmy G back here just to watch over you and scaring Trey Lance into hurting himself. And they, they screwed themselves with their contract situation too, because now yeah. in Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy G got a bag they, that they reworked this off season for him to stay. If he were to play over 25% of the snaps, he gets a 250 K bonus. And if he gets a win, he gets a hundred K bonus. So basically every win on or just out one of win? the season, every win, oh, fuck. every game, he's going to get 250 K bonus. And with win pending is a hundred K. So on top of game checks, he <laughs> oh my God, he's getting a bag. Nice wow. He's getting very nice. So let's say the, the 49ers win 10 games this year. That's a million. That's, that's a million dollars in his pocket. No, it's more because he, he gets he gets he a gets, million every four games. Yeah, well, I'm talking about just for the win. Games. I'm talking about for the win incentive. 
It's a hundred thousand for every win, right? He gets ten wins. Yeah, that's ten wins. Dollars. That's a hundred thousand. I mean, that's a million. That's yeah. right around. If he gets ten wins, it's right around five million dollars. What is his contract? What's he get yearly? <laughs> I'm I'm not. I think they reworked it to where it was only like seven a year or something, or seven for this year or something like that. But we should we should see who what quarterbacks make <laughs> seven to five million a year. That, well, that's actually twelve, I guess. It's gonna end up being twelve million a year. Yeah, like eleven, twelve million. If they get I, I don't remember exactly what they reworked his contract to, but that's still a great fucking deal because no matter what, you're getting two fifty a game because you all you have to do is play twenty five percent of snaps. He or twenty more than twenty five percent. And he did that last week coming into the game. So you got 16 weeks of that <laughs> that's so that's awesome for him and you know that's what they get they shot themselves in the foot yeah hypothetically but um that was a I, bad hypothetical <laughs> i think <laughs> jimmy g will be more successful with this 49ers team than he was going to be Right now, especially get- with when Greg Kittle comes back, which is probably next week. Exactly. All right. So let's move on. Good job. 49ers winning that game. Jimmy G. Next game. Uh, next game. Rams against the Falcons. Um, This was it felt like the Rams all the way, but Falcons came back down 28 to three. All you Falcons fans out there. The dreaded 28 to three the dreaded. You hate to see that score, but you end up coming back and this game was ended all on a Jalen Ramsey interception. And boy, was that beautiful. Yeah, that was a great it. play by him. After he, his game he, last week, he had to seal this. One. He's he, just he taller. He was just bigger. He was just bigger than that wide receiver and secured the back. He secured the game on that pick. He yep. didn't really catch it. The ball, I mean, he caught it, but like, wasn't like a, I don't know. I was watching a video of it, and the ball kind of fell into his hands. But good play, good pick, secured the game. Shout out Jalen Ramsey. Needed that because he was fucking brutal last year. Uh, or last, last week, week, sorry. sorry. Um, all right, next game. Next game, the fucking Denver Broncos against the Houston Texans. The and under, I, baby! And I said... Under, holy And shit. I said last week, if the Broncos can't score 20 points against the Texans, something is wrong. They fucking scored 16 points. Russell Wilson had 200 yards, something like that. He only had 11 fantasy points. And yeah, that was supposed to be my... That's my MVP protection. pick. That's my MVP pick, and that's what he's doing against the fucking Texans. I told you he's never had an MVP vote in his career, and he probably is going to retire that way. This man looks like he was 44 playing out there this week. He looked older than Tom Brady. There's something going on in the Broncos. I told you before, I hate the Hackett pickup because it's only going to make their defense worse when they were a quarterback away. And, yeah, this Broncos team is not that good. Just plain out and simple. They already have – their, like, top players are all getting hurt. Like, Judy and uh, PS2 both left the game with shoulder injuries. Like, I mean, and if you really, really thought David Mills was any good, you're wrong. Kai is so bad. Just I just fucking – these teams didn't do anything this week. The Jags were my only bright spot all fucking Sunday. Yeah, um, I'm glad Roman's under hit back to back weeks. Only absolutely. Yep. I'm Roman's a sharp. Guy. Roman is a sharp. If you listen to this, let's follow ride. Roman, tail Roman, because let's he's ride. gonna win every week. Let's Definitely ride. Go against my picks. Um <laughs> Next game I have is Packers Bears. I mean, there's not much to say that other than Aaron Rodgers. Not much to say because this is exactly how we imagine it would ha- would go, and that's exactly what happened. These are teams that I enjoy watching. When you think something's gonna happen, and they go out and execute it, they don't let fucking people get to their in their heads. They don't let sh- the media fucking rile them up. This team is a bunch of veterans, and I love the way they handle business. I know they're playing the Bears, and they fucking own the Bears. But still, they had the second half, they had everything that could possibly go wrong, go wrong. 
and they still handled business. Yeah, the Bears are bad. And Justin Fields, did you see his comment after the game? I feel worse for my teammates in there because the fans, they're not. The locker room feels worse because the fans don't work hard. And that's how you know know you're on a bad team when the quarterback cares more about what the fans think than uh, what the record is. The quarterback should be yelling at his offensive coordinator and saying, buddy, you let me throw the ball 11 times. When are we going to ever fucking win? We're not. No, and and when it's fourth and or whatever it was on the one yard line, and you fucking are in shotgun, that absolutely made oh, my the mind. The QB like, sneak in shotgun, bro. I hate how fucking NFL coaches do that. Like I, that's I, literally I, a high school. Might, that's a high school mistake. If I might be old QB school. QB sneaking, get under the yeah, quarterback. I might be old school, but I feel like you want to be closer to the goal line when you take the ball from the center than I don't know five yards old behind. School. That's common sense, bro. <laughs> No, I, I think that has a little to do with like this newer style because I didn't see the like because teams nowadays do like the game winning kneels in shotgun and shit like that. I don't understand. I don't understand it. A lot of these quarterbacks come from systems where they don't receive under the center snaps. Yeah, and it's it's weird because I don't know. An entire career of playing football. If you couldn't handle a snap, you weren't a center and you weren't a quarterback. Seriously. You have to. It's not hard either. It's literally not hard. No, it is hard in game. Trust me. I used to be a quarterback when I was eight. I know. No, you you were one of these quarterbacks in shotgun. Shut up. I never played shotgun. (laughs) I was under center because I was stuck. Five yards behind the line. Um, The center couldn't even snap the ball five yards then. You have to. You have to. Make those plays work. When you're on the goal line, you're under center, dog. You have to make sure the the handoffs are nice, the the snaps. I mean, you got to do it from under center. I think that's a game plan saying we're more comfortable with the ball and shotgun than we are with Justin Hurts under center taking a snap. I mean, what would have worked there was the fucking good old Tim Tebow jump pass to the tight end, but no. They don't, don't they're not smart that. enough to do that. I they're would not love smart enough. not enough teams pull that play off the fake run jump pass. Nobody, yeah, not it worked really every time. People. Literally it, every time. It used to work every time. Um all right, so we got these two last Monday night games. Make a fucking tackle we'll eligible and boom, touchdown every time. Boom, touchdown. All right. Um the Bills ho ho I was gonna say hosted the Titans, but that word didn't come out. Um and destroyed them. The Bills are those guys. They obviously have a chip on their shoulder. I know it's week two. I know I we think it's Stephon game. Diggs is that dude. I think Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen are both respectively tops in their categories. Absolutely, positions. Yeah. They're both tops. Like you can't get better. You can't get much better than that. It literally felt like Josh. I, I knew where Josh Allen was going to throw it every time, and it was to Diggs, and the well, defense just still couldn't stop it. When Gabe, okay, well, that game, Gabe Davis is out, gets announced out about a couple hours. That's what I'm the saying. Game. Who but else? Still, the Titans it? have a rookie cornerback that is supposed to shut down Stephon Diggs. Good fucking luck. Yeah. He goes twelve catches for 148 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, he he put a three burger on him. And one points I am getting nine trades for him in fantasy right now. People are thinking I'm trading him. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, attention, right. Attention to the league. Yeah, <laughs> fucking right. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but the Bills seem like that team. The Titans played a terrible game, all at uh like factors from special teams, offense, defense. Terrible. Uh they benched their starting quarterback for Malik Willis in the fourth quarter. That was probably their only highlight was watching Malik Will run around on the field. He's still very raw. Um, that Titans team, you fucked up. You got rid of AJ. You should have just paid him what wide receivers are going for now. That's all they needed to pay him was regular <laughs> wide receiver money. I know. And you have him. They traded him. And uh, Traylon Burks. Heartbreaking. The boy gets hurt like the third play of the game. Yeah. yeah. That hurt them the rest of the game bad. The I know he's not game. really a difference maker because he's a left tackle, but still. That's a difference uh, maker. That's a leader of your own line. Yeah. Tackle. Derrick Henry had like fucking 12 yards. Everyone the whole game. says it's the center is the leader. I think it's left tackle most of the time. 
Oh yeah. Especially, strong side, blind side. What, it, what's that saying? Yeah. yeah. Strong side better be the blind side or you're fucked. Yeah. Your quarterback's fucked. Yeah. Um, they're the highest paid position other than quarterback. And there's a reason for left tackles to get their money. Um, but yeah, it sucks watching Taylor go down. That sucks. I don't think it hurt the Titans that much because obviously they lost forty-one to seven. <laughs> um, so what, Derrick Henry? What is going on with that guy? Have a, a game plan now. Before you couldn't really game plan. It was either AJ Brown's going to beat you, Derrick Henry's going to beat you, because there were games where Derrick didn't do nothing, but AJ Brown popped off. Now, now it's AJ just Brown Derrick Henry only is getting more catches and yards than the entire Titans wide receiver yeah. core. But those those two hundred yard rushing games are out the window, gone forever. You'll yes, never have one again. I don't think so because they do not have any other game plan. Like you can't be, hey, don't forget play action, those wide receivers are gonna be there. Like not really. Uh, and I feel like the league has finally come to um like they finally know not to arm tackle this guy. Everybody's finally hitting them low. Nobody's trying to wrap them up up top they're all fucking trying to get them on the floor and, and that's Henry because ain't used they, to it they know what's coming they yeah, know nfl coaches are right. like hey when are you idiots gonna understand you're not arm tackling derrick henry to the floor and not to say the least but ryan Tannehill is not a good quarterback ryan tranny hill that's a new name <laughs> it's not forget <laughs> he's garbage he's bro. not a good quarterback I mean, there, was. there is a lot of teams in this league that still need quarterbacks. A the lot. They're one of them. <laughs> and this was the number one seed in the AFC last year. Derek, hate to Derek see. Henry led the league in rushing yards for half the season last year. And he didn't play half. So. Yeah, he only played 10 <laughs> games. Um, but it, it's sad to see for Titans fans because that team is just, I don't think, going to be any good this year. But that's another division that's up for grabs until the very last week. So we'll see if they could make a comeback and turn it around. I'm sure they're going to blow a team out and we're going to be like, what the fuck happened? The hell did that come from? Yep. Um, but for now, they lose 41-7. to All right, last game of the night. Eagles Vikings and Eagles just shut the door. Shut the door. Um, Kirk Cousins on Monday night, which I had mistakenly forgot. Zero recollection. Recla- recla- I'm still. Recla- I don't know. How to say <laughs> there you go. That word's too big for I'm me. I'm glad you didn't get that word across to hurt my feelings. Um, <laughs> but since we got that out of the way, um, yeah, Kirk Cousins sucks on Monday night. He p- had a terrible performance tonight. Um, Vikings, you have a good team. You have a quarterback who threw three interceptions tonight, so um, might be time to move on. Yeah, and in one league, I got Russ and Kirk Cousins as my two quarterbacks, so I am fucked. Absolutely, absolutely. Start um, making trades in that league. No shot. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants those guys. So the interesting thing is is that there are teams who have quarterbacks and who are going to be free agents this upcoming season jimmy g is a free agent and kirk cousins a free agent do we see a jimmy g in minnesota i could see it i don't know i can see it i think there's two quarterbacks who are nfl ready in the in college at the moment who i think teams would rather have i don't think the Vikings are going to be there for a quarterback. They can trade. I mean, yeah, they could. They, but it, they can trade always, Dalvin. For always a... scary going and getting a young guy. You could be like the 49ers and get Trey Lance, and all of a sudden you're two weeks later, and we've really got to go back to our back option. Like, at what point? There's only there's only two ways to do it now: is get a young guy, aka. That's what the Bengals did, and they're in the Super Bowl two years later. Or you pull a Rams move or a Tom Bra- uh, Buccaneers move, and you get the the top dude, the top dog. A veteran. Yeah, veteran or just just a dude who's proven, but he's been on a bad team, bad situation. If I'm a win-now team, I definitely go veteran. But 
If I'm in a rebuild, I you truly, obviously start with the quarterback. I, I truly think that. So in the 49ers case, uh, I mean the Vikings case, I think they get a veteran quarterback. I would. I, I truly think they go veteran. I don't think they go young with all well, the. Mitch Trubisky is going to be available. You got to get a long, big extension over there. <laughs> That'd be a downgrade from fucking Kirk. Yeah, true. No, <laughs> there's only um, there's only two quarterbacks who had six touchdowns in week one or something like that. It was Patrick Mahomes and Mitch Trubisky, <laughs> both Hall what, of Famers. What about week two? No, I don't. It wasn't last week one. It was like in yeah. a week one or something. In something a week, happened. No. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember what the stat was, but Patrick Mahomes and Mitch Trubisky were <laughs> the only two quarterbacks to ever do it. So. Both, um, both Hall of Famers. Eagles, I talked about it. I think they're going to win the division. I think they're that team in this division. Finally built a good roster. Finally went and got a wide receiver instead of drafting all these bums. They drafted bum after bum after bum in the first round. And you know what? <laughs> Go get one. Go make the trade. Please. Um, And that's what they do. And yep. it obviously helped them. Island pick for me. Two and all my islands this week. I good, absolutely good, love good it. Islands, good islands, Trevor. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, Jalen Hurts. I have him in two fantasy leagues, and I absolutely love that pick. Especially when rushing touchdowns are six points. That's yeah. nice. Let's see who um, the under is next week. Well, the, There's a, the next, next week five. slate, so. next week's games are absolutely amazing. I love all of next week. Good. I love it all. That's what I like to hear. Good. All right. Um, nothing wrong with being average. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys like this. Um, boys, we need to get a baseball pod here soon. So, yeah, we do. Let's just get into Maybe that. Maybe we can ask our guest. Maybe we could ask our guests some baseball talk uh, on Wednesday. All right. Nothing wrong with being average. Deuces. Later. Jenny, Steelers, still bad.